We are back at the Garden of English, and you are welcome here. I'm Tim Freitas, and I'll be your host for today. As if it would be anybody else, but you never know. Today we're going to look at the most sophisticated rhetorical analysis thesis templates that I can provide you. Of course, we'll be using the publicly accessible 2015 AP Lang Question 2 about Cesar Chavez because we've been using that in all of our other videos that have dealt with rhetorical analysis. And of course, it's linked in the description right down below. Truth be told, this video will help you no matter what. But I have to admit that this particular video will make way more sense, especially if you've watched my prompt breakdown video. Make sure you check it out at some point if you don't watch it before watching this. Also, I'm going over two ways to do this, so you're going to want to stick around. The second thesis template is way more sophisticated than the first but the first still rocks, so you're going to be in good shape no matter what. In my last prompt breakdown video, we broke down the prompt to look like this. So this of course means that in reading the Chavez piece, that question 2 link below, that by the time we're done, we're going to have an answer to what we called the conquer question. What is Chavez's argument about nonviolence? If you haven't already read the Chavez piece and you don't know the answer to that question, Pause the video here and answer that question. Then come back right here and press play. As you've been following along with all these videos this whole time though, and you've read the piece, and you've annotated the piece, and you've thought about that question, just take a moment to jot down your answer in this template that I'm sharing at the bottom of my screen here. The answer you should have come up with should look something like this. Here's a sophistication tip. You could write the words that although after the word highlights or showcases. This adds some nice complexity to your understanding of the purpose. What can also make your writing more sophisticated is if you subscribe to the Garden of English so that you won't miss any of our instructional videos. But you only have five seconds to do it. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, back to business. If you produce a purpose statement that does answer the question that you're looking for, it's going to look something like this. Now this purpose statement isn't necessarily your thesis statement, but it's going to be the foundation for it. So just because you produce the purpose statement doesn't mean that's the thesis for your paper. We're going to have to add a couple things. In a strong rhetorical analysis thesis statement, you want to make sure you address all of the elements that make up the rhetorical situation. The context, the exigence, the speaker, the audience, and the purpose. And on test day, you'll also want to include the rhetorical choices the author makes. You'll notice that if you were to only use this purpose statement for your thesis, that you don't have context, exigence, or choices in your thesis. So we're going to add those elements into our template, and now it will look like what you see on the screen. What we're going to do now is fill in the contextual information blanks with information that we had from our original prompt breakdown guide from the last video that I made. By adding some of this info, my thesis will begin to actually look something like this. This thesis is juicy. Moist. In other words, it rocks. And you should like it. Just like you've liked this video already. What? You haven't liked this video? Just click that thumbs up right down there. Okay, if you think about the thesis that I just showed you, you're going to notice that I moved my non-essential from before the author's name, like it says in the thesis, to right after the author's name. That's okay. Templates can be played with as long as everything still flows smoothly and whatever your thesis looks like still has all the parts. Also, this non-essential highlights some context about the speaker because we have already written the other background information from our organizer into the thesis template itself. So, know that templates are guides and sometimes guides need to be adjusted. Now we have to add the rhetorical choices into the template. This part is actually pretty easy, especially if you've annotated your piece like I instructed in these videos right here. I typically suggest that you include three choices because it's really hard to write about more than that when you only have 40 minutes to write on your exam. The best way to pick the choices that you want to add into this template is by finding the three pieces of text you think most clearly and accurately project the purpose of the piece. Once you find that textual evidence, just say what the author is doing in that section of textual evidence that you've picked out. I recommend that you choose one piece of text closer to the beginning of the reading, one piece of text from the middle section of the reading, and one piece of text closer to the end of the reading. This will make sure you've written about the whole reading passage, and that's something that you'll want to do, especially on test day. If I go back and check my methods of development annotations, I can easily identify my three choices that I want to write about. That's why it's important to annotate that way. Now that I'm armed with these, the thesis falls directly into place. Check out how awesome this thesis looks as it comes right up on your screen. Pretty 
good. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. insane. Oh, yeah. But what if you have a teacher who insists that you shouldn't list choices in your thesis on test day? I can help you too. But I have to admit, I really think you should include the choices because A, including them will guarantee that you get the thesis point, and B, it will help you keep yourself organized under pressure while you write. What you can do though, is use the same template, but take out the choices and the phrase in order to. You'll also need to add an S to the word showcase or highlight, whichever one you chose, and then you'll likely have what your teacher desires. It'll look something like what's about to show up on your screen. Okay, that thesis template allows you to create a thesis that's awfully good, but what about those of you that want a little bit more? Well, I have another thesis template that requires you to do a little bit more cognitive work, but it's gonna turn out a lot better. This added effort is what allows writing your thesis to be a more sophisticated process. The template will actually be two sentences long, and that's okay. Yes, a thesis can be more than one sentence. Here's what it looks like. You'll notice that what you're required to do is bring some reasonable inferences from your reading of the passage to the table, and you'll have to articulate those in your thesis. The first inference you need to make is about the challenges that Chavez faced that moved him to create the passage itself. You'll have to consider the relationship between the context, the exigence, and the audience to do this. Suggesting you know what challenges Chavez faced highlights your greater understanding of what's going on and influences the writing of the piece. The second inference you have to make is where you provide an educated guess about what Chavez could have done, but instead chose to do differently by producing this particular reading that you're going to engage with. The text won't actually tell you this, but if you're a strong inferential reader, you'll be able to work this out and then put it right into this thesis and then look extra sophisticated. There are different ways to fill in this template based on your background knowledge in your inferential reading. So I can't guarantee that you and I will fill this template in the exact same way, but hopefully it's something similar. But that's why this template is so great. It shows off your brain. If you're gonna try this, pause the video here and try to write your own thesis that attempts to move through the elements of thesis template two. Of course, I'll share with you how I would write my thesis if I had to respond to this prompt. When this pops up on your screen, notice how I include much of the same information that I had in my original thesis template, that one that was still really good, but also notice how I more extensively cover the elements of the rhetorical situation in this particular template. Here's mine. I inferred that there was a rising impatience that Chavez was trying to quell. I also inferred that Chavez could have changed his mind and embraced more violent tactics, but he didn't. This template could also easily be adapted to remove the choices, once again, for those of you that have teachers that insist that you shouldn't have them. Take out the section that says, and he does this by, and then just add the ultimately moving right into its place. Just shift it, and there you have them. Two sophisticated thesis templates. Both are excellent, one is stronger, but you can't go wrong with either of them. If you want to know how to derive body paragraphs from these types of thesis statements, then all you need to do is like this video, subscribe to the Garden of English, and check out this video here.